Hello everyone. Welcome back to my favorite space in the whole wide world. I'm Teresa Ann Garrett Green Ford, but just call me T. This is Thanksgiving week. Not only is it Thanksgiving week, but it's my show 28. Now this Thanksgiving is going to look different from previous years. Basically because I'm not preparing a traditional dinner. I am not going to prepare the gravies, the mashed potatoes, the stuffings, the yams, the sweet potato pies, the coconut cakes, all the types of foods that call my name in the middle of the night. No, no, no. It's going to be just as delicious, but calm down, okay? And then it's going to be different because it's just going to be Jay and I. And my sons, they may grace us with their presence. And if they do, the more the merrier, okay? Nevertheless, I have so much to be thankful for. And I'd like to say that um, this is the beginning of Thanksgiving week. And this is the week that I like to prep up until Thanksgiving. Because when Thanksgiving Day do come, I can relax I can enjoy the ambiance. Okay, my dinner is red beans and rice, greens with smoked neck bones, and don't judge me. You use what you use. I'm going to use what I use. And Cornish hens. If my sons come, they want grilled salmon, and I'll have that for them. But anyway... So this is how I do my greens. I like to cut the stem out just like so. Go down each side. Just take a nice little pile, make a nice little pile of my greens that are cut with the stems. I like to cut my greens before I clean them. This seems to be easier for me. So, after I bought four pounds of greens, and after I cut all the stems out, they look something like this. So now I have my stems all cut out. So I take and just fold it over where the stem used to be, and then I just roll it up like a piece of tobacco or a lasagna roll or something. And I like to cut it right down the middle. I like to cut it down the middle again. And then I just start to cut. I try to get my pieces as uniform as possible because I think it looks better. So when I get done, they look something. This is how I like to do my smoked neck bones. I add a little bit of oil to my pan. And next, I'm going to add two fresh garlic cloves. One small onion that I diced up. A little bit of salt and pepper. And about a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. That is definitely optional. I'm adding my smoked neck bone, and as you can see, you don't have to cook the onions until they become translucent, because they'll do that on their own while they're simmering in the broth. So now I'm adding four cups of chicken stock. Shake the pan a little bit, and it's going to cook for about two hours. So now I bring my um, pot of greens over here to the sink. And I'm running them under cold water while the sink fills up. What I like to do is add in about a cup of distilled vinegar because this distilled vinegar helps to take the debris, the sand, and the dirt off the greens. I was pretty lucky because these greens aren't that dirty. Nevertheless, though, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to wash them just as good. So I'm going to just agitate these greens while my sink fills up. 
I'm going to do this about three or four times and then I'm going to add it to the pot of my smoked neck bone meat. This is my meat that I took off my neck bones and all that good broth that I make that I cook them in. And my greens are so clean, they squeak. I had to wash them and rinse them for about, I did it four times in my sink of cold water and vinegar. Four times I did it. So I'm going to put my greens in my pot like so. And these greens are going to probably cook. Of course, they'll cook until tender, but I'll say maybe two, three hours tops. I'm going to put my lid on here. And so they'll while cook. they're cooking, watch me hula hoop. Okay, my greens are done, but what is greens? What are greens without cornbread to eat it with? I'm going to show you my secret recipe to the best tasting cornbread that I know how to make. Oh. Okay, this is my secret recipe. Well, it's no secret no more because I'm letting you know. You need a quarter cup of oil. These are my wet ingredients. One egg and a cup of buttermilk. If you don't like buttermilk, it's okay. You can use any kind of milk that you like. Now I like to keep it separate because you shouldn't be, you shouldn't mix the muffin mix too, too much. You want to just mix it enough to incorporate it. So that's why I keep it separate. In this bowl, I have a one and a quarter cup of flour, three quarter cups of cornmeal, two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a little less than a quarter cup of sugar. So now, Jay, if you want to bring it on down and let him see it, I'm going to put my wet ingredients into my dry ingredients and just fold it. It's just that simple. Now what's going to make this so special? We like onions in ours. 
onions, and jalapeno peppers. Yum, 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 yum. Now the jalapeno peppers, I, I chopped up, and I used the seeds and the membrane. That's to make it extra hot. I used two, but you could use one. I used two because I didn't want it to go to waste. So that's it for the cornmeal. If you want, I mean for the cornbread mix. If you want, you could put a little bit more milk in it just to loosen it up, but I like to use it like this. Okay, now I'm just taking my little ice cream scooper and I'm going to fill up these little loaf, mini loaf pans and make my little cornbreads in there. Okay, this is going to go into a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. Nice and golden brown on the top. I'm putting like two hefty uh, scoopfuls in here. The reason why I'm using, I'm filling it up to the top is because this is a thicker batter. And when you have a thicker batter, you don't have to really worry about it spilling over. Now, if it was loose, I would have a problem. But let's see if I'm right once they come out of the oven. Okay, my, up, my muffins are out of the oven. Let me see if I could get them, lift one, at least one out. I'm not eating any. I'm not going to eat one until Thanksgiving. But Jay can. Look at that. Is that pretty? That's so cute. Got to take another one out for that measure. These are little mini, micro mini, Woo, hot micro mini loaves. Look at that. My beautiful greens are done. My wonderful muffins. Well, mini loaf, my micro mini loaves. I'll say that's fit for a king, queen, prince, and princess, along with my greens. Now you probably wonder why am I cooking my muffins so early, but I'm going to put it in this handy dandy freezer bag and on Thanksgiving day, you warm them bad boys up in the oven and it's just like new. All right, Jay, can you get me taking my, per my perfect bite? Get a little bit of this meat here. And a little bit of this collard green. Mmm. So tender. Mmm. 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 That is tender. Now, I'm going to just show you the inside of this muffin because it's going to go to J. Look how, look how moist that is. I'm not going to eat one. I'm going to wait until Thanksgiving Day. I'll even put a little bit of butter on for them. Just a little. I didn't mean to bring all that out. But anyway, I did. So I'll put that there for him to eat later. But anyway, these greens, oh my goodness. The meat is fantastic. They seasoned my greens wonderfully. Let me tell you just one more story, please. When I was a little girl, my parents were having a party. There was a woman who brought a pot of greens. I just happened to look in the pot, and I was impressed and amazed. But silently, I never said anything. I was amazed and impressed because the greens were cut so small, so uniformly, and they just looked so wonderful. And I said, and I don't know if I had made greens from at that point or not, but I said, whenever I make greens, I, I'm going to cut them small. 
And I always think of that lady whenever I make greens. I at least try to cut them nice and uniform. On that note, I just want to thank you for watching. And I also want you to remember that the new sexy is being healthy. And I'm trying my best to become healthy.